Hello, this is Mrs. Beers. I'm going to be reading the Tarantula Scientist on this video so that you have it to refer back to as we are learning about this book and reading it in class. We will. This is part of Unit 1 at the beginning of the school year and this first reading will be um, accompanying Lesson 1 and it will be pages 7 through 15 in the book. Okay, so as you can see, this is my Kindle version. Uh, this is what the title page looks like. We have the table of contents, as all informational text will have. And I'm going to go to the map, which shows you the setting of this informational text. And I'm going to go to full screen for you, so you just focus on that. You can see right here, Florida, Gulf of Mexico, and then we have Central America here, and then this is South America, and French Guiana is over here, okay? And the equator is somewhere in here, and where, as you get closer to the equator, it's more tropical, hot, humid. Okay, and we're familiar with that being in the state of Florida. Just north of the equator, French Guiana's steamy rainforests are home to about a dozen species of tarantulas. And here we have some pictures. Sam uses a fishing stick to trick a goliath bird eater out of its burrow. And we're going to learn more about that as we go. Here we have the heading, Queen of the Jungle. Sam Marshall is lying on his belly in the rainforest, his freckled face just inches from a fist-sized hole in the dirt. He turns on his headlamp. He gently pokes a twig into the tunnel and wiggles it. Come out, he says into the hole. I want to meet you. Normally, it's not a great idea to poke sticks into burrows in the jungle, especially if you don't know who lives there. Snakes, for instance, don't appreciate it. In this particular rainforest, the most common snake is the fer de lance. The name means spearhead in French, which suggests you better not bother one. Okay, also want to let you know there'll be words, vocabulary words, highlighted in blue, and there'll be other things highlighted in pink, and I'll explain those as we get to them. Avertissement, French for warning, reads the rough-hewn sign at the head of the jungle trail to Tresar Reserve. The sign warns visitors to beware of snakes, and while they're at it, to watch out for spiders, wasps, biting ants, bees, wild pigs, slippery trails, roots poking up from the ground, and branches falling down from the trees. But Sam knows this forest well. He knows exactly what he's doing. Sam is a spider scientist or arachnologist. His specialty, the biggest, hairiest, and some would say scariest group of spiders on earth, tarantulas. That's why he's come all the way from Hiram, Ohio, to French Guiana in South America. Just north of the equator, French Guiana is home to only 150,000 pe people. It's about the size of Indiana. But for its size, this is probably the tarantula capital of the world. Perhaps a dozen species of tarantulas live here, including some of the most spectacular. So far, Sam has caught only a glimpse of hairy legs in the hole, but he knows who's in there. A goliath bird-eater tarantula, the largest species of spider on the planet. How big might that be? Big enough that with outstretched legs, this spider could cover your whole face. A large one could weigh as much as five mice. This tarantula is a goliath for sure. Sam isn't frightened at all. Come on, sweetie, he calls down the hole. Sam is trying to lure the spider out. Normally, tarantulas spend the day waiting in their silk-lined retreats. They come out at night to sit in front of the burrow. There they wait for prey. But by wiggling the stick as if it were a juicy worm or a scuttling cockroach, a male, the goliath bird-eater, despite its name, would probably prefer to a bird, Sam hopes to coax her out into daylight. There, 
Sam feels her grab the twig with the pair of food-handling feet called pedipops next to the front of her head. She's pretty strong, he says. He knows she's a female because she can al- he can already see how big she is. Females are bigger than males and live much longer. He wiggles the stick some more. He thinks she'll come out if the prey seems to be trying to get away, and he's right. Here she comes, he announces. She thunders out of the hole, her eight walking feet, each tipped with two claws called tarsi, patter loudly on the dead leaves of the, on the forest floor. These tarantulas are the jaguars of the leaf litter, Sam says, and it's true to the frogs and worms and insects who live there here. This tarantula must be an awesome predator. Even for a big mammal like a human, the sight of a Goliath bird eater tarantula rushing out of her burrow takes your breath away. She's not even full grown, but her head is the size of a 50 cent piece. Her abdomen is bigger than a quarter. All of her body, including each of the seven segments on her eight strong long legs, is covered with reach, excuse me, rich, deep, reddish-brown hairs, some of them half an inch long. When she races out, she looks as if she might rush up Sam's arm, maybe onto his face. And if she does, will she bite him? Would he die? The giant tarantula stops abruptly just four inches past the mouth of her burrow. Even though her eight eyes are almost blind, her other senses, which include chemical senses humans can only dream of, tell her the bad news. No meal here. And then, quite reasonably, she backs down partway into her burrow. Sam ties a bit of bright pink plastic tape to a nearby tree to help him find the burrow again later. He gets up to leave to find more spiders. The tarantula doesn't vanish down the hole. She waits calmly, still near the mouth of her burrow. Three adult humans, Sam and two companions, thud past her. To fine-tuned sense of touch, excuse me, to her fine-tuned sense of touch, the vibrations must shake the very earth. Surely she realizes that this nearly 500 pounds worth of monsters are clomping around just inches from her home. Yeah, but why should she care, Sam says. She's queen of the jungle. And here I just highlighted this in pink. That was the heading at the beginning. So I want you to think about why she would be considered the queen of the jungle. And there she is. The largest spider on earth, the Goliath bird eater tarantula, guards its burrow entrance. Sam is thrilled every time he sees a Goliath bird eater tarantula. He is in awe of this giant spider. They really are, at the level of the forest floor, the masters, he says but he's never been frightened of them. He has handled hundreds of tarantulas and worked with them thousands of times. He's never been bitten, not once. They don't have a bloodlust to bite people, Sam says. The last thing they want to do is bite you. They'd rather be left alone. They are just really interesting, beautiful animals, not horrible creatures. In fact, not one single person has ever died as a result of a tarantula bite. Tarantulas don't attack people. They attack only when they want to eat. And happily, tarantulas don't eat us. People eat them, though. In the jungle, people roast them to burn the hairs off before eating them, and sometimes use the cooked tarantula's leftover fangs to pick their own teeth afterward. For most tarantulas, biting is a defense that they'd rather not use at all. They'd rather hide. If that doesn't work, some tarantulas use a defense more effective than fangs or venom, their hairs. How can tarantulas use their hair to protect themselves? Sam explains. When irritated, most New World tarantulas, those from North and South America, will use their rear pair of legs to kick hairs off their back end. Each hair is covered with tiny barbs like a porcupine quill, but is light enough to float on air currents. Sam has had a few hairy experiences himself. He knows firsthand that these barbed hairs can get into the folds of your skin and your neck, between your fingers, into your eyes, up your nose. The result? 
itching and sneezing that make a smart predator leave the tarantula alone. Tarantulas don't go hunting for prey. They wait for something tasty, like this cockroach, to walk within reach, then pounce. Though tarantulas are much less scary than you probably thought, they're probably far stranger than you might have imagined. In fact, all spiders are pretty amazing. They smell with their feet. They taste with special hairs on their feet and legs. They wear their skeleton on the outside instead of the inside. That's why their skin is called an exoskeleton because exo, excuse me, like exit means outside. Their ex exoskeleton isn't made of bone but of cuticle, the same stuff you peel off a cooked shrimp. Even tarantula's hairs are not really hairs but very fine cuticle. Spiders seem like creatures from another planet. Their blood is clear, or sometimes pale blue or yellow. They periodically shed all their exoskeletal skin and even the lining of the mouth, stomach, and lungs. Tarantulas do this while lying on their back with their feet in the air. They can regrow lost legs. Sometimes a tarantula will pull off its own injured leg and then eat it proving the old saying, you are what you eat. Look at a tarantula and you can, see clear, can clearly see the astonishing body plan of all spiders. Their body parts seem to be in all the wrong places, or doing the wrong things, or too numerous, or too few. The head is covered with eyes, eight, fangs, two, and legs, eight. The stomach, too, is in the head. After all, spiders have just two big body parts, the head and the abdomen. Some spiders, including most common house spiders, digest their food before they eat it. First, the spider bites and paralyzes the prey with venom. Then it pumps fluid from its stomach into the victim. In a few moments, the inside of the prey has turned to liquid. Yum! The spider slurps out the juice and then tosses the skin away like an empty juice box. Some spiders, though, do things differently. Tarantulas, for instance, grind up their food with teeth behind their fangs. Spiders, with their silk and strength and grace, have abilities we'd like in our comic book heroes, like Spider-Man. But if spiders have their own heroes, they are probably tarantulas. Tarantulas are super spiders, and not just because they're so big and strong and hairy. Most spiders live only a season or two. Some tarantulas can live 30 years, and tarantulas are among the world's most ancient groups of spiders. Sam considers them sort of spider dinosaurs. Tarantulas have been around for more than 150 million years, and unlike the dinosaurs, they're not extinct. They have a lot to teach us. An adult female tarantula sheds her skin about once a year. First, she spins a silk molting mat in the safety of her burrow. Then she rolls onto her back, wriggling and struggling for hours to squeeze off the old skin. Afterwards, she lies exhausted while her new skin hardens and darkens.